I played at club at Broughton Park. Um, my local club since I was pretty young, since I was like five. My dad was my coach there. Um, and then went to St Ambrose just because I knew my grandma lived in Hale, so I used to always drive past there, see the rugby pitches. And right. I just saw the rugby pitches, always wanted to go there and play rugby there. Um, and then from there, that took me to like Lancashire, played for Lancs through Broughton Park, my club. Could have played for Cheshire, but I think just because I'm from Lancashire, I always wanted to play for Lancashire. Yeah. Um, then after that, got picked up by the sale like under sixteens. Um, played played with them in all the little tournaments against Newcastle, Yorkshire, all that kind of stuff. And then we had the Wellington tournament, and after that, they selected the England under sixteens. That was like the last year they did that. So got into the England under sixteens, and we played Wales. Can't even I don't even know what year it was now, but we played yeah. Wales. Um, and then that's when I first like thought. It could be like a more than just a not like a hobby, but like try and make a career out of it. Really, um, after that, then sale eighteens, England eighteens, and then um, then got signed after the eighteen season after captain in the eighteens, signed by sale, and it's been going pretty well so far. Playing for England under twenties, and that's my journey really in a in a nutshell. What what's the the ultimate? What what's the the ultimate challenge or goal you're looking to get to in that in the career? Um, well, probably my long term goal is to obviously play for England and I don't know maybe play for the Lions or whatever, but definitely play for England. Um, and then I'll probably just be a regular starter in the Prem, playing um, or playing international rugby, playing Premiership rugby all the time and. Not just be like an average name in, in there, be like a a name that everyone knows that's a good standout player. If you're really passionate about your rugby sport, when, when did you that start and where did that come from, that passion? Um, I had, In primary school, like, I, I mean, I played Thai rugby with like, to like three years up and, I, and right. I always had like, that was my kind of, I played loads of other sports, but I, I stood out more in rugby and played a lot better when I did the tag rugby and then I just loved it all my my uncle used to play it my dad used to play it and it was more like a push than football I played football up until year seven but um, I was always just rugby was always the one just preferred it more a bit more contact Um, I enjoyed that that side of it really brilliant and in terms of your journey at school you you continued to play rugby at St Ambrose and yeah um, did you ever get the opportunity to go to another school in terms of scholarships or anything yeah, so after the England under sixteens, um, that's when quite a lot of players start to get offers from different schools, and I got offered to go to Sedba, Kirkham, and then Downside in Bath. Yeah, and I went to have a look at Downside, and I didn't look at Sedba or Kirkham, but I was always in my mind just going to stay at Ambrose anyway. Yeah, um, I mean, firstly for the education, like a lot of players like would go to like Kirkham or Sedba, and then sacrifice maybe their education a little bit to do better in the rugby. But I always thought I was getting good enough rugby from school and also sale at the time. Yeah. That that would be fine. And when you go to like Sebra or Kirkham, it's the rugby is more of like preparing you for a professional environment. Yeah. And the rugby at Ambrose is more like how go out on a weekend, play, there's not loads of structure, you just sort of have fun, play what's in front of you. Yeah. Express yourselves a bit more. It's not as strict and serious and that's the kind of rugby I enjoyed playing at the time, and I knew that hopefully it would get it would get um, a lot more professional. But you don't want to get tied down by that too early because you might get sick of it being that strict and and all that. So, and my education at Ambrose is probably better, so I stick to that really. No, no, definitely. That that's a big one, isn't it? That education. When you finish your rugby career, then you've got your education to fall back on. But... Yeah. Yeah. Just from Rafi's point, there, I know you touched on it. Do you think the um... The, the lack of pressure potentially from Ambrose helped you in the long run. Um, potentially, I mean, it, I, I never really like had to do any box kicking or yeah. anything like that, Ambrose, which probably didn't help when we first came to sale because when I first came in, I couldn't box kick for toffee. I mean, like, but that's yeah, the that thing about professional rugby that you don't really know. So you don't do that at school. At school, you take tap and goes. You don't kick for posts. Like, well, at Ambrose, we didn't. We were more of like a flair, running rugby style style team. And it probably did, actually, in that... Because that's the kind of way I like to play. I don't like to play a boring style of rugby. 
So um, it probably did help me, help me play just the way I wanted to play, and probably put me led me in that stead. How would you describe high performance? I'd say um, it's probably about like fine details, mm. like at school or at club. You never review other teams. You might hear about one player that's oh they've got this class player, they've got this class player, but. And you might like stand out at under twelves or under fourteens or under sixteens, but the more you go up into different levels of rugby, the shorter that gap is. Everyone's everyone's class, everyone's trying to all got like the same goal. Yeah. And you've got to try and figure out yourself um what point of difference you've got, whether it's speed, whether it's skill, whether it's strength. You've got to try and work on that skill. So like, let's say you go out two hours extra kicking just to get 1% better. That's the kind of margins that you're talking about. Or you're watching a Bristol game, just watching everything the nine does. So that when you play Bristol, you can catch him out on something he's, he's not done well. Or you can f- try and find something that's going to be to your advantage. It's all about like fine details, I'd probably say. Yeah, okay. cool. And also, it's probably like, there's a lot more pressure on you, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, I've only been at Sale for two years, but there's 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 loads. Even though, even if you're young and people say, "Oh, you're young," and um, there's no pressure on you, this that there there's always pressure on what you do, and there's obviously a lot more pressure in that environment than at a school or a club. Yeah. When you were like selected in that squad, what what was going through your head there? Um, I mean, all week I was I was so nervous. Yeah. Um, trying to make sure like. I was doing extra passing, extra kicking, more than I would do normally because I'm just like, I really nearly need it now. Mm. But, um, I mean, on the day, actually, like when we did a warm-up, I was kicking with fast and stuff, I didn't actually, I felt pretty confident that if I was in this scenario, this scenario, like, I wouldn't be too worried. Yeah. I mean, like I, I used to probably worry a lot about my delivery always being perfect or my box kick always being perfect. But, I mean, on that day, I'd worked pretty hard up to that point and I thought, you know what? I'm confident that I can. I don't need to think about like those kind of things. I can focus on my game. Mm. And, I mean, never got the opportunity to come on, but if I did, I'm sure it would have been a, a good debut. Yeah, that that'll happen. Don't worry, Rafi. Work hard, and that'll happen. So when you say, what? How would you describe like the culture within the jet changing rooms, and and what did you notice about the mentality, possibly of the other people around you? How that differed from school to in and around um, sale. The culture, the culture, just like respecting each other, looking after the place, like the the, the new um, the new training on, like looking after the place, looking after each other. We've had a few uh, meetings recently about the team culture, and obviously because there's lots of people from different backgrounds and different um, different countries trying to like link. Even though it's like COVID, um, and it's hard to go out for coffees and do this and that, we've still got to try and gel like a lot of the team. Yeah. Um, but I think the club culture is like we've got a lot of competitiveness like in every position no one's like people are going to be standout players because of what they've done in the past but they're still competing with young players trying to come in and like in the back row for example there's loads of back rows mm. but their competitiveness whenever we get into a 15 or 15 every now and then there'll even be a scuffle or someone might hits one a bit harder than they expect but that's just because everyone wants that shirt and that's how it should be. Everyone should want to be playing for sale and want to um, want to be playing week in, week out. And in terms of obviously in pro sport, probably in, in, in your life, you have ups and downs. Um, how have you managed those and any lows in your career so far? Um, I say like the main two lows, well, from my perspective, are like injuries and then um, like team selection. So like I've had quite a few injuries. Um, before the England under 18 squad got selected, so this was a, a year early. Yeah. In my MCL, so I was in the sale um, in the sale academy league, but I was playing on the wing. wasn't getting much time at Scrum Art because I was a year below. So then, in a week off, I played for my club and yeah. did, did my MC, tore my MCL playing for club. It obviously, wasn't good. Um, but I think it's just you've got to set small, small goals. When you when you're injured, don't look too far ahead, um, and just get your head down, do your rehab and get back. Because if you're just dwelling on it, it's not going to help. You. It's not going to get you anywhere. It's just going to put you in a worse place. Um, like 
even if you've got an injury for two or three months, it might seem a lot of the time, but if you're looking for a long career, it's nothing in that time. You might miss a few games here and there, but no one's going to be talking about that in a year or two years later than that. I mean, yeah. Sturge, you had your knee injury. I mean, when I had my knee injury, never as bad as yours, but you just got to try and set some more goals and crack on. That's what I've sort of thought for my injuries. Yeah. And Sturge, on that then, on that question to you, really, is how did you manage that? Uh, yeah, it was a tough one for me. I had a long term on the so And then, um, yeah, like Rafi said, just little goals. Um, even if it's to do a bodyweight squat, if you've had an ACL, that's a massive, you've got to take it as a massive win. Um, it sounds really selfish, but there was other people in similar situations to me as well. Mm. So luckily I wasn't in the gym doing rehab all by myself. There was other lads in there, so you seem to form a bond with people that you potentially wouldn't have done. So that helps, obviously, the culture around the squad. Yeah. yeah, just like Rafi said, little, little victories. Can you get to a squat and then can you get 20 kilos on the bar? You've got to let little goals and then eventually your goal will be sprinting down the pitch again and then you're back into it. The low I was um, going to say was just like team selection. So, um, I mean, last year for the under-20s, for the first the first game against France, I didn't get selected. But um, I don't know. At the time, I was I was very annoyed by it because I thought I was better than the other scrum halves and, and all, all of this, but it just made me more more hungry. Yeah. It just made me want to really prove that coach wrong. Because at yeah. the end of the day, selection is not like, it's subjective, isn't it? Like, yeah. It's about what, so this coach might prefer a player just because the way he plays or, or this or that, um, or doesn't see you in that way. So, I don't know, it just gave, gave me more of a drive. If you don't get selective for stuff, it, you, it should, hopefully mindset gives you more of a drive to to get better at something or to prove someone wrong like I always wanted to prove that coach wrong and to be fair I've got the same coach this year and hopefully I do this, uh, I've proved him wrong and when we play the Six Nations um, I play more yeah well, it's one of those things isn't it turning that setback into a positive and thinking right yeah I'm going to I'm going to prove him wrong I'm going to push on and do that so that's good uh, yes yeah, Sturge go for it yeah, so I'm not putting them. It's it's a real test of character, that. So I think I've been guilty of it before. You can go, it can massively go one of one of two ways, that. Um, especially when you're in that environment, uh, you can either get down, get get your head down and crack on with it, with, like Rafi said, or you can sulk, and that'll just get you nowhere. And if you sulk, that that goes onto the pitch, and, and then it just spirals from there. So it's real, it's really difficult to do at the time because you think oh, I'm better than him. So why should I keep training hard? But that's completely the wrong mindset. You just gotta. Wanted even more than that after that. Going back, going back to you, Raph, on all your accomplishments so far, I know you, you're at the start of your rugby journey, but looking back, what are you most proud of so far and why? Um, pretty. Uh, when I capped in the sale under 18s, yeah. pretty proud of that. I mean, I'm not the biggest bloke, but as a scum off, I just still don't mind bossing around some of the big lads. And um, I was proud of that because that's probably my first major, like, captaincy role I suppose I mean a captain in sevens teams at school but I was never like the captain of the 15 yeah um, so captain in the sale 18s I'm very proud of that um, my, that first England game on the 16s like putting the jersey on for the first time singing the national anthem for the first time I, I was I was in front of like all, loads of my family were there yeah very proud of that um, how did that feel Raph putting that England shirt singing that national anthem what was going through your head I don't know, it was class. I just wanted to perform. I mean, it all goes like very, very quickly, that whole start of the game, putting the jersey on, but then getting a victory against the Welsh, like, there's not much better than that as well. And then, looking at role models, have, have you got anyone that stands out uh, you as a role model or has had a massive influence on your your career so far? And who would it be and why? Well, um, I was thinking about this question. I mean, you could quite easily say your parents and stuff like that, but like my parents don't like their jobs and they have they have nothing to do with with rugby and like my path is completely different to theirs. So when I was younger, I, I was I loved my rugby, but I loved um, triathlon, running, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So Alistair Brownlee was quite a big role model for me when I was younger. Yeah, because it's just his work ethic and like he was just class, super fit, massive engine. Um, Johnny Wilkinson, an obvious answer. 
yeah. um, when I was younger, Jason Robinson. Um, and then now, I try and just take like little bits from different people because obviously you want to be your own player. You don't want to be known as, oh, he's just exactly like this player. He's exactly like this player. But um, like, for example, at Sale, like I'd probably take work ethic from like Ross Harrison, who's in the gym before anyone, um, out on the pitch after any after everyone, doing out the back offloads, passing off both hands, which you put, you would never imagine when you see him playing, making big carries and scrummaging. You would never expect him to be doing that. Yeah. Um, and skills wise, like people like Sam James, who can just throw ridiculous passes off both hands and can kick off both feet put spiral bombs up they're the kind of things that I try I want to try and add into my game and be more like these kind of people so they're probably my role models now yeah and then do you go about seeking out advice from those guys now do you go out and, and chat to them and pick their brains and yeah definitely I try and learn as much as I can from them I think probably my first year I was a bit quiet and yeah and all of that but we've spoken recently that like we're all here for the same goal to make the club better so, whatever you can do to to make to make the club better, then do it. So, I'm I'm trying to go out there a bit more um, and, and speak to people, ask people, ask Faf for some help with this, or ask Cliffy for some, for some help with this, and yeah. asking people's views, watching games back with them. Yeah, definitely. I'm trying to learn as much as I can, absorb as much as I can from those players. What are your three non-negotiable behaviours? Um. See, at the, the under-20s camp the other, the other week, we had the same kind of um, question, like how we would describe ourselves yeah. throughout this um, the tournament this year and throughout this season. And loads of them sort of got brought up, like hard work, accountability, yeah. all these kind of things. But like the main things that I'd say for me would be yeah. your, de your desire, so your desire to play for your club um, and then your passion, your passion to play for your club, to play for people around you and someone that, you, that you're that you close with, that you've built a bond with, gets smacked back in a tackle. You're not just going to be annoyed at him for not carrying hard enough. You're going to get over him and, and make him happy for, that you've helped him and then he's going to yeah. do the same thing for you the next time. Um, and then always wanting to improve but like that's quite cliche, but mm. also enjoying the moment. Cause you can like, when you see teams, like if you watch like the New Zealand documentary on Amazon prime and all that kind of stuff, they're always talking about improving, improving when they've won like 50 nil against Uruguay or something. Yeah. But also you've got to enjoy the fact that you just had a massive win. Like, mm. I mean, that's, that's why we do it. Like obviously we play rugby or we play sport for the enjoyment of it, but you get the most enjoyment when you win. And yeah. so, Got to enjoy every moment of that. That's probably yeah. what I say. So, like desire, passion, and always wanting to improve, but making sure you enjoy, enjoy yeah. that. Last one for me um, is a, a bit of a, a shout out to the Stockport Grammar School pupils. Like, if you can give them any advice, knowing what you know now, what would it be? Um, I'd say enjoy all the different sports for as long as you can, because I mean, once you get into a position like I'm in, you don't go and play five-side footy with your mates or anything like that anymore, um, or anything like that. But the sports that I did since I was younger, triathlon, cross-country running and swimming, all these different kind of things, that's helped me become the player I am today. Like I try and pride myself on having an engine yeah. and being as fit, being the fittest guy on the pitch. And that's come from like doing all those sports and and just enjoying it because like if you focus on one thing for too long so let's say you've done rugby all your life and that's the only thing you've ever done eventually you will probably get bored of it yeah and you might not think that now but you probably if you get into a more and more serious environment you, you, it's very likely that there's a lot of people that have just i, I already know i know someone from gloucester who um who i played at in the under 18 six nations with and he's packed it in just because he didn't enjoy it anymore so yeah try and do as many sports as you can and enjoy them Focus on your on your academics. I mean, at the England under 18s, it's sort of that Six Nations hindered my A levels. I think a little bit because I probably wasn't organised enough, um, didn't work hard early enough for my A levels. That I had to cram probably a bit, and because at those camps, there's no, there's no way you're going to be able to do any revision. You, you're there with some of your best mates playing rugby for your country. Like you're not going to be able to separate for 
45 minutes, two hours and do do some revision. Yeah. And also, um, realistically, very few people um, become professional rugby players out of a massive pool of people. So have a plan B, but then, I mean, there's that quote, isn't there? Like, if, you, if you've if you got, a, you're going to fail plan A if you're focusing on plan B. Yeah. Um, but whatever you do, just be, be obsessed with it. I think, even though I might have not done so well in my A-levels, I managed to get to where I am today because I've just been obsessed with my rugby. So whatever your passion is, whatever you're gonna, whatever sport you want to do, or anything in life, just be be obsessed with it and um, and love it. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'd say. There's some pupils have sent in a couple of questions. I'll just ask three good ones. Um, how have you kept yourself healthy and motivated during lockdown, especially that first lockdown where you weren't training at Sharks? Yeah, that first lockdown. I mean, pretty lucky for me. So last year. Uh, one of my mum's friend was selling loads of gym equipment that she just didn't want anymore. And obviously, all gym equipment is like skyrocketed in price. So I managed to get like loads of stuff for like 150 quid. And um, I mean, I was working really hard on that and doing runs and all this kind of stuff. And eventually, you sort of just lose a bit of motivation, but everyone does. So um, I've got a younger brother, and he's just start I uh, use like two years in Ambrose or three years in Ambrose but um, I just wanted to sort of make him a better player and yeah. that sort of built my motivation up again because trying to take him on in 1v1s outside and uh, working on his skills to try and make sure he's better than me when I was that age and that's probably what motivated me the most trying to get my little brother better cool so I think getting a training buddy even if it's over Zoom that's yeah definitely better. definitely uh, self too much you're just going to get you're going to lose that motivation very quickly. Yeah. Question two. How long do you train for during the week and what does your training schedule look like? During the week, so it all depends really. So if we've got a game on, on Saturday, we'll um, probably be in for Monday. Well, at the minute it's all a bit different because of COVID. So be in on Monday, get COVID testing and then have like a non-contact day. So a bit of gym, uh, skills, not much contact at all with any other players. And then Tuesday, hopefully everyone's negative. And then we train contact. So we'll have probably like an hour and a half gym in the morning. Um, then we have t we'll have team meetings. So all the gyms are separate now because of COVID. Can't be spending too much time with everyone. Pardon me. And then, um, then we'll have a team meeting around 12 o'clock. We'll eat some food before the team meeting. Then go out, train an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Um, that'll be split into 15 on 15, um, backs units, forwards units, and then come back in, eat, do some analysis if you want on the computers and then leave. And then Wednesday, Wednesday will be off. Or oh, no, Wednesday we'll train. Thursday will be off. Friday will be captain's run. So Wednesday will be similar to Tuesday. Um, Thursday will be off. Friday, captain's run. So, the team, people that are not selected in the team will have their own rugby session and gym to do in the morning. People that are in the team, they'll go through plays, walk through stuff, make sure everyone knows their detail, and then Saturday play. Cool. So that's what the, my weeks consist of at the minute. Cool. Last one, I know you touched on it uh, earlier. How did you balance your rugby commitments and schoolwork? Um, 